Hey everyone, you're listening to Concentrate with Dr. T, a podcast discussing cannabis science and business. This podcast is published on YouTube and Spotify. Please follow me on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Discord. The information can be found in the description below. Please like and comment with any questions about cannabis you have. On today's episode, we'll be getting into some of the nuts and bolts of cannabis extraction and the most common extraction methods. I'll also give some general points on extraction and how you can find help selecting the option that's right for your company. Thank you for joining me today. We'll get started on all this shortly. Welcome back to Concentrates with Dr. T. Let's kick off by just talking about some general principles of how cannabis extraction works and why we even do it in the first place. For more basic information about what marijuana extracts are, check out episode one of season two of this podcast. So what is the goal of marijuana extraction and what basically is the end result? Marijuana extraction is the process of separating the desirable compounds, such as THC and CBD, from the undesired portions of the plant material. There are several different methods of extraction, each with its own set of benefits, drawbacks, and hazards. Different extraction methods will remove and concentrate different mixtures of chemicals from the cannabis plant. Besides the widely known THC and CBD, Other cannabis compounds that are targeted for extraction are terpenes, flavonoids, CBG, and other cannabinoids. The end result of an extraction process is often called an extract or an oil, but can go by many different names. The physical and chemical characteristics of a marijuana extract depend upon many factors, including the process chosen, the type and quality of input material, and how the extract is handled during and after processing. Extracts of cannabis come in many different colors and consistencies. The color of an extract can be clear to bright yellow, orange, brown, and sometimes almost black. The consistency of an extract can be almost anything, including a pure crystal, a glass-like sheet, a crumbly clump, a saucy texture, a peanut butter-like consistency, a waxy texture, a sticky sap, and many more possibilities. The ultimate reason for the different colors and textures is the varying amounts of different chemicals present in each extract. The different combinations of cannabinoids, terpenes, plant waxes, and other substances create a plethora of unique looks, smells, tastes, and textures of cannabis extracts. For example, extracts that are brown or almost black in appearance actually have higher levels of chlorophyll, the pigment known for making plant leaves green. Different people prefer one type of cannabis extract over another for many reasons. Some people like to dab or inhale the extracts, so they prefer certain flavors and textures. A concentrate user could select a product in part for how easy it is to work with, with their tools and setup at home. Other people prefer to bake their concentrates into edibles. So they might prefer more refined extracts that have removed everything except essentially the active cannabinoid, making it easier to incorporate into their recipes and minimizing the impact on flavor that a cannabis extract might impart on their baked goods. So the ultimate purpose of extracting cannabis is to isolate the compounds that you want for a given purpose from everything else that you don't want. The purpose that you intend for your extract will dictate the methods that you should choose to extract it. You will never get an inhalable extract using glycerin as an extraction solvent, and it would be a waste of good quality butane hash oil to be used in an edible product. Besides dictating the kinds of products you can make, Each extraction method also has its own hazards associated with both the production and use of the concentrates. For example, 
CO2 extractions are performed under high pressures, sometimes 5,000 PSI. Butane is an odorless and explosive gas, meaning you need detectors and other safety equipment to ensure worker safety. We'll get more into the hazards and drawbacks of each method as we go through them one by one. So with that basic information about extracts and extraction out of the way, we're going to talk about several different methods of marijuana extraction today. I'll get into some details about the advantages, drawbacks, common uses for the end products, and other useful information about each method. So let's jump right in. I'll start with butane because this is such an interesting legacy extraction method. In fact, I would argue that this is not something that would have ever been developed had marijuana not been a banned substance for so long. The main reasons that butane came into use are first of all, the relative ease to produce an enjoyable extract quickly. Safety is a whole other issue. And second, the fact that you can buy large amounts of it as a consumer without raising a regulatory eyebrow. People buy lots of butane all the time for lots of reasons. So someone buying a lot of butane for marijuana extraction would fly under the radar. Despite this, butane just happens to be an excellent solvent for selectively removing cannabinoids and terpenes from marijuana flowers, leaving an extract that is potent in active cannabinoid, high in flavor due to high levels of terpenes, and a relatively easy solvent removal or purging process. So, in short, butane extraction is a method of extracting marijuana plants that involves using butane as a solvent to strip the plant material of its valuable compounds, which are then collected and purged to remove any residual solvents. This works because even though butane is a gas under atmospheric conditions, it doesn't take much pressure or temperature control to get it to liquefy. So the butane acts as a liquid solvent to extract the cannabinoids and then is easily evaporated away because of its natural desire to be in the gas phase under the conditions that typically surround us on the surface of the earth. The downside to this ready evaporation is that it can put dangerous amounts of this explosive gas into the atmosphere pretty quickly. There are many news stories from around 2010 to 2015 when home extractors were performing open blast extractions to obtain BHO and unwittingly blowing up their garage or apartment building. While this method is not named for its inherent danger and propensity to explode, it is certainly fitting. One of the benefits of using butane as a solvent is that it is a relatively cheap and easy to obtain solvent, making it accessible to a wide range of extractors. Additionally, butane is a highly efficient solvent, which means that it can extract a large amount of concentrate in a relatively short amount of time. However, there are also some downsides to butane extraction. As mentioned before, one of the biggest concerns is safety. Because butane is a highly flammable or explosive gas, there is a risk of explosion or fire if proper safety precautions are not taken. Additionally, if the extraction process is not done correctly, residual solvents can be left behind in the final product, which can be harmful to consume. When butane extractions are not performed correctly or use improperly prepared biomass, they result in inferior extracts. Because butane is a nonpolar solvent, it tends to strip the plant material of all of its nonpolar compounds, including plant waxes and fats. This can result in a lower quality final product, or if done intentionally and expertly, can be an important part of achieving a desired texture and flavor for the product. Another drawback of butane extraction is that you can only scale it so far. BHO will always have a place on store shelves, but will also remain almost exclusively a craft process. The larger the extractor, the more butane required, the more dangerous the entire operation becomes. Technically, at some point, you would need a Department of Homeland Security registration to hold so much on site. So legal butane operations are limited in how much they can grow. 
Despite these downsides, butane remains a popular solvent for extracting marijuana concentrates. This is partly due to the fact that it is relatively easy to perform and partly because it can produce a highly concentrated final product that still remains immensely popular amongst connoisseurs. Higher quality butane extracts are most often used for dabbing or inhaling. Lower quality butane extracts are often infused into other products such as edibles and enhanced joints. If you're interested in trying butane extraction for yourself, it's important to do your research and make sure you have the proper equipment and knowledge to do it safely. Additionally, it's important to be aware of the laws and regulations in your area, as many places have strict rules about the production and sale of marijuana extracts. Next up, we're going to talk about carbon dioxide, more commonly called CO2 extraction. This method came into existence for at least one of the same reasons that butane extraction did. Solvent availability without drawing unwanted attention. CO2 is available for all sorts of uses, including beverage fountains at every restaurant in the country. Unlike butane, however, there is much more precedence for using CO2 as a solvent for extracting active constituents from plants. For example, a large portion of decaffeinated coffee is produced by using CO2 to extract the caffeine while leaving behind the majority of the coffee flavor. Many people know of CO2 as the atmospheric gas that humans produce more of by burning fossil fuels. Since it is a gas, how is it used as an extraction solvent? Well, under conditions of high pressure and specific temperatures, pure CO2 can become a liquid, a solid, or a supercritical fluid. You know solid CO2 is dry ice. Liquid CO2 is used for commercial dry cleaning operations. Liquid CO2 can also be used to extract cannabinoids and terpenes from cannabis plants. While the extracts produced by liquid CO2 are usually of high quality and very terpene rich, this is also a time consuming process. So if you're trying to extract more quickly, you will want to use CO2 in its supercritical state. What is a supercritical fluid? Put simply, it is a substance that is in a state of temperature and pressure that causes it to have characteristics of both a liquid and a gas. When CO2 is put into this state under high pressure and elevated temperature, it will extract active compounds from cannabis much more quickly than liquid CO2. The drawback is that this method also extracts a lot more of the undesired plant compounds, leaving you with more cleanup to do downstream. In many cases, the increased output is worth this drawback. That said, one of the major problems with CO2 is that it becomes increasingly difficult to scale the size of these extractors as they become larger and larger. The high pressures, heat exchangers, temperature controls, valves, and other factors come together to limit the size and scale CO2 extractors can become. I mentioned earlier that CO2 extraction is responsible for a large, about 20% portion of the decaffeinated coffee market. What accounts for the production of the other 80% of decaffeinated coffee? Well, it's a flammable liquid solvent called ethyl acetate, which we will discuss later. Some other benefits to using CO2 as a solvent is that it is considered safe and non-toxic to the end consumer. It is inflammable and it is widely available. However, its production is highly dependent upon the activity of other industries such as ethanol production. So slowdowns in those other industries can result in tight supplies for CO2. We saw this occur during COVID lockdowns, for example, when corn ethanol production for use in fuel decreased dramatically. Another advantage of CO2 extraction is that you can change the temperature and pressure of the liquid or supercritical CO2 and selectively extract different compounds, allowing for more precise control over the final product. This allows you to produce many types of extracts and even extract the terpenes separately from the cannabinoids so they can be set aside and used later for formulation while the cannabinoids go through several distillation and filtration steps to further purify them. 
However, there are also some downsides to CO2 extraction. One of the biggest concerns is cost. The equipment and technology required for CO2 extraction can be quite expensive, making it less accessible to some individuals and smaller operations. More importantly, the cost makes it difficult to scale up as demand for cannabis products increases. Additionally, CO2 extraction can be a time-consuming process, requiring several hours to extract each batch of material. Another often overlooked bottleneck during the CO2 process is winterization. Winterization is the process of dissolving the crude CO2 extract in ethanol, freezing it, and then filtering it to separate the unwanted waxes from the active cannabinoids. This process can take 24 hours or more to complete. Maintaining the pressures and temperatures required to keep CO2 in a liquid or supercritical state also demands a lot of electricity, making it an energy intensive process. The main hazards of CO2 extraction are the high pressures that are used, up to 5,000 PSI, the asphyxiating and oxygen displacing nature of CO2 gas when released to the atmosphere, and the risk of frostbite from touching ultra cold surfaces that can develop from repeatedly evaporating liquid CO2 into gaseous CO2 in a closed loop, which is not unlike how your refrigerator operates, by the way. Despite these disadvantages, CO2 extraction remains a popular method of extracting marijuana compounds. This is partly due to its ability to selectively extract different compounds under different parameters, the lack of residual CO2 found in the final product, and also because it can produce a highly concentrated and desirable final product. The end product can be in the form of wax, shatter, distillate, oil, and terpenes or sauces. However, the different end products require varying amounts of time and effort to achieve, so some forms that are technically possible to create may not be economically viable and another method should be chosen. If you're interested in trying CO2 extraction for yourself, it's important to do your research and make sure you have the proper equipment and knowledge to do it correctly. It's important to note that each method for cannabis extraction has its own unique sets of benefits and drawbacks. And it's important to consider your specific needs and goals when choosing a method of extraction for your business. Additionally, it's essential to be aware of the laws and regulations in your area, as many places have strict rules about the production and sale of marijuana products, or even how those products are created. Reach out to me for more information, help with choosing an extraction method for your business, equipment selection, and more. That's all I have for you today. Join me next time on Concentrates with Dr. T. Peace.